Perfect. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the Great Big Bike Ride Info Night we are hosting tonight. Uh, firstly, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of all the lands on which we gather here tonight. And for me, that is the Boonawarung people and pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. So my name is Jamie and I'm the event manager for the Great Big Bike Ride and I'm here joined by uh, Rebecca who's our GM of operations and marketing, Sam who's our marketing coordinator and our special guests um, just at the moment Alison and Lee you can see they're in yellow but we'll um, get to them very shortly. Um, so secondly just some very quick housekeeping uh, you can use the uh, chat functions to ask any questions Sam will be monitoring that one and we'll also allow some um, time to answer those questions as well, uh, both after our interview assignment and also their presentation about the event. Uh, this info night is being recorded uh, and we'll begin firstly um, over to you, Beck. Thanks, Jamie. Before we get into, of course, the uh, meaty stuff for tonight, which is all about Great Vic and most importantly, the one-on-one um, -on -one chat with Simon Clark, which we're so lucky to have. I just wanted to uh, chat you through a little bit about Bicycle Network and what we do. Um, many people have known us for a long time uh, as Bicycle Victoria. We've been around for over 34 years. Uh, but of course, as Bicycle Network now, what we're about is getting people outside living healthy, happy lives um, and choosing to do that by making it as easy as possible for people to ride a bike. Um, so a big part of what we do obviously is run events, Great Vic being one of them, which we'll talk you through tonight. Um, but the other parts of our organization that you might not be familiar with include our behavior change program. So things like ride to school across hundreds of primary schools in Victoria and Tasmania. Um, our public affairs side of the organization, which looks after infrastructure, campaigning, um, and that really public voice about better facilities for bike riders um, across Victoria and around Australia. Um, and of course, our insurance side of things with our membership. So we have almost 50,000 members, which we have extraordinary support from, and we're really pleased to be able to support them with membership, riders' rights, um, and of course, lots of fun activities throughout the year as well. Um, now, tonight, we uh, do have our special guest, Simon Clark, coming along. Um, Simon's been a friend of the Great Vic Bike Ride for a very, very long time. Um, we're thrilled that he's given us his time to chat through his experience on Great Vic um, and what it means as a rider. Um, but to get us started tonight as well, I would really like to, or I'm really pleased to introduce you to our new CEO, Alison McCormack, um, and our special guest, Bicycle Network correspondent, Lee Turner. Hello and welcome everybody. We're so delighted to have Simon Clark as our special guest. So much so we dressed in the yellow colour for the Tour de France. So we are super excited to have him coming along. He is on his way, so he might just be a little delayed because he's caught up in traffic, I think. So, um, But we will cross back to you when Simon arrives to share his own story about the great big bike ride. No worries. Thanks, Ali. Um, Jamie and I will kick on with the nitty gritty of Great Vic. Of course, we're really excited to talk to you about this tonight um, as we head towards uh, the return of Great Vic this November um, and starting in Koroit and heading through to Bunningyong. We are expecting almost 3,000 riders for this year's Great Vic bike ride. And the real beauty of Great Vic is it attracts riders from all walks of life, all different age groups, and most importantly, all types of riders. Um, so it doesn't matter if you're normally commuting or riding on the weekends or enjoying the rail trails, the Great Vic is definitely for you. Uh, we're also joined by over 350 amazing volunteers on the event every single year. Um, some of those volunteers have been with us for 30 years. Some of them join, uh, come along as students to get some work experience and things like that. But we're very lucky to have an amazing group um, of volunteers who make the magic happen every day on the event. And then, of course, the other part of Great Vic that's so special is the communities. Um, over the last couple of weeks, our teams have been out uh, working with the communities, helping them get set up and prepare for having such an influx of riders into their town, how they make the most of that opportunity, but also how they make uh, you feel very welcome and provide a great experience for you in their town. Um, the people really is the best thing about Great Vic. Um, this is coming up to my 11th Great Vic bike ride. And one of the things I love most is being able to sit down at dinner every night with different people 
hear different conversations, why people are there, where they've come from. Um, but one thing that's always really common is that most people, if it's their first great Vic, um, they know someone that's done it before. It's very much a rite of passage in Victoria. So we're really thrilled that you're thinking about joining us uh, this year as well. On to the writing. This is probably the most important part that I imagine most people want to hear about. This year's route is a cracker. So we are starting, um, or I guess we're taking in the very best of Southwest Victoria, um, which includes the Otways, um, what they call the volcanic craters and lakes area, um, and of course the Great Ocean Road and Golden Plains. So we're starting down in Koroit. Um, I did the community meeting down there last week and there was 40 people come along, all different community groups, and they are really gonna put a festival on for the arrival of the Great Vic. So you'll start in Koroit if you're doing the nine or the five day. If you're doing the three day option, you will start in Apollo Bay. Uh, but either way, you'll get to the start of the arrival day. Um, there's big festivities to welcome you into the Great Vic community. You'll get your luggage, your bike sorted, set up your tent and settle in for the night. So there's no riding on your first day. For those joining us in Koroit, your first day of riding will be day two, where we're heading through to Nurat. 66 Ks, uh, Nurat's a town of about, I think it's about 200 people. Um, but the weekend before we get there, they actually host their show, which is about 8,000 people. So uh, they're very keen to have another big bunch come through. Uh, riding the next day will be from Turat to, uh, Nurat to Timboon, which is 74 Ks. Now on that day, we're gonna go through what I said before, which is the lakes and crater countries which is absolutely beautiful and often a part of Southwest Victoria or Victoria that many people don't know about. It's sort of rolling hills, beautiful green mountains in the background that you don't have to climb. Um, and also uh, lots of beautiful farmland that's done so well over this winter as well. From Timboon, we are heading through to Birigara, which is a bit of a great big favorite. Now this day is one of the challenge days. It's 105 kilometers. Um, sort of undulating all the way, um, but again, through that really lush green uh, dairy country. Um, and of course, um, part of the foodie trail as well. Um, there's lots of amazing food experiences around that Timboon and Birigar uh, area, including Timboon ice cream who come along normally on the Great Vic each year. There's a whiskey distillery in Timboon, um, fudge factory along the way. Uh, and Birigara has one of the best places for an egg and bacon roll once you get in there as well. It's called Otway Artisan and uh, it's definitely a favourite of mine. Um, that challenge day uh, is, as I said, quite undulating but definitely doable. There'll be plenty of rest stops along the way for you to take a breather and of course all our on-road support which we'll go through in a minute. Once you get to Birigara the next day we will be heading through to Apollo Bay. Now this is a short day, one of the shorter ones on the event, 65 k's, but it is also a challenge day as you take on the um, hill climb that's just outside of forest and heads up um, and then down to Skeens Creek on the Great Ocean Road. Um, while it is a challenging climb, um, once you get to the top, the views are spectacular and like nothing else you see along this ride. It's really, really magic. Um, and then a beautiful sweeping downhill straight into Apollo Bay. Good news is once you've done that climb as well, you're into rest day. So you get to take a bit of a breather, a full day off the bike. If you're a five day rider, you'll finish with us at Apollo Bay. Uh, if you're a three day rider, as I said earlier, you'll join us there. Um, and for those who are doing the nine days, you'll continue on once you've had that full day off the bike. So after rest day, uh, we're heading from Apollo Bay to Anglesey, one of the highlights um, of the event on along a fully closed Great Ocean Road um, from Apollo Bay through to Lawn and Aries Inlet. Um, so that's fully supported, fully closed road and a beautiful experience to ride that as a once in a lifetime opportunity. Once you get to Anglesey, we've got a great campsite there, um, very welcomed by the communities and the Rec Reserve Committee. Um, one more night there, we're heading through to Inverley. This is when we get into the Golden Plains area. You'll notice a very different landscape. Uh, great food in Inverley and um, really, really lovely riding through there for our final night, which they're very excited to welcome us to. The final day, 
Uh, for our nine and three day riders is a great 60k pedal into Buninyong, just outside of Ballarat, quite a historic town, beautiful scenery along the way, quite undulating uh, and a beautiful way to finish the ride. Now, all of that riding across those nine days or the five and the three, if you're choosing one of the shorter options, is fully supported. Uh, people often ask what that means. Um, and that means that we've got your back anytime you're out on the road and all you should have to worry about is pedaling. There are rest stops every 25 Ks um, and lunch 50 Ks into each day's riding. Um, you get your lunch out on the road. That's um, a full wrap or a roll, a snack, some fruit. Uh, each of the rest stops have got water and toilets, first aid, bike mechanics, um, and out on the road with you will be our sag wagons. Um, so they're there to help you get through the day if you're having a tough time and can't continue, um, but also more often than not, they'll support you to keep riding if you can. From a risk management perspective, um, out on the road, you'll also see plenty of marshals and traffic management and also support from Victoria Police. Um, so sometimes the roads will be closed, as I mentioned with the Great Ocean Road, um, the climb up and out of forest, um, but mostly you'll see speed reductions, uh, traffic control at turns and right-hand corners, um, and marshals at any points along the way that might need some additional instructions. And um, finally there, one of the essential services of Great Vit, we know it keeps every bike rider going, uh, is coffee. So at all of our rest stops and at the campsites, there's a good supply of really great coffee from great local providers. Perfect. So thanks, Beck. So we'll continue on to hear more about the great campsites that we do have on the Great Vic Bike Ride. Jamie, I might just jump in before you go to that because I think yeah, of Ali and Lee have Simon with them. So we might just a quick arrived. intermission. <laughs> yeah, of hello course. everyone. Well, we're super excited. Simon has arrived. So next to me is Lee Hollywood Turner who knows Simon and knows all of his amazing stories about the great big bike ride. So he's here to interview Simon Clark. So I'm going to move out of the seat and welcome Simon. Welcome, mate. Great Hi, guys. Tech. Hi, everyone. Well, we've got the great man himself here, the Tour de France stage winner. But where we're going to start is everybody wants to know, can you please share and tell us your great Vic story? Uh, yeah, sure. So I started, I did my first great Vic, I believe, in 97. Uh, I was in primary school, actually, in grade five. And my dad decided to do it with his with the parents and friends group of my primary school, uh, not with the actual students. And uh, I said that was all well and good, but I said he couldn't go without, he couldn't go unless he took me. So it took a bit of convincing. And uh, he said to me, you can only go if you're able to average 18K an hour in, in the training sessions. So we set out and we started training up for it. and spent a few months uh, building up and I managed to get up to that 18k an hour on average and he took me along for my my first great Vic. So tell me, so how many great Vicks did you actually do? So I did three to begin with, uh, 97, 98 and 99 and then uh, and then I started club racing and, and getting a bit more serious into cycling and then I came back in uh, I always said to my dad, whenever if I if I turn when I turn pro, I want to go back and and kind of relive where it all started. So I turned uh, I signed my first professional contract uh, for 2009 during 2008 for the 2009 season. So at the end of 2008, uh, we went back and did it for a fourth time uh, together to kind of relive where it all started. So how do you go from the Great Vic bike ride? To the Tour de France. How did what's how does that happen? Yeah, I mean it's it's a long journey. Uh, if you if you think I did my first Great Vic in '97, wow. and I did my first Tour de France in 2013, so that was a good 15 year journey to get from day one on the Great Vic to day one on the Tour de France. But uh, yeah, I just 
really found the passion for cycling through the Great Victorian Bike Ride. And, and after my second one, actually, uh, I decided to join a, a cycling club and, and join Carnegie Caulfield Cycling Club. And that's really when uh, things started uh, building up from there. And I started track racing and, and then uh, this going to state championships and national championships. And, and then, yeah, just built it from there. I think you're going to have to return the favour to your kids and take your kids on the Great Vic Bike Ride when they're old enough. But for the kids out there and the people doing the Great Vic Bike Ride, have you got any training tips for them? Sure. I think the best training tip is, is trying to get used to riding every day because it's, it's, it's always difficult uh, during the week to get enough training in and you know you do rides on the weekend but the thing with the great vic is it's a multi-day event and you want to get used to backing up day after day because if you if you do one long day fresh it, you, you feel like you can get through it but if you do a day's training and then you try and do that same ride again the next day uh it suddenly becomes much more fatiguing so uh for me, the best preparation is not necessarily super long rides, but try and get used to riding day after day because that's uh, something that you need to become accustomed to. And I see that, like, uh, obviously the Great Big Bike Ride is really important, was a big part of your life and important to you because I saw when you did win a stage at Tour de France, your team put something together and it included all the snippets about the stuff, how you started on the Great Big Bike Ride. So it obviously is very close to your heart, this event. Yeah, it sure is. And I still have, you know, even though I was only 11 when I first did it, I still have uh, vivid memories of, of riding the Great Vic. And uh, um, it's just unfortunate that it, it falls in a period in the year where I can't always get back in time from Europe, from the European season to come and come and join you guys. Uh, but I wish I could be back uh, to do it more often. No, it's great. It's great to have you here from, from the Great Vic bike ride to the Tour de France and winning a stage in the Tour de France. It just shows anyone can do it. It can happen. Just believe, start on the Great Vic and who knows where it's going to take you. That's exactly right. Amazing. Thanks, Lee. And really great to hear from you, Simon. We appreciate your time tonight. And of course, your um, long-term support of the Great Vic and Bicycle Network. We're very lucky to have you. No, my pleasure. Um, am I just, if you don't mind, I might open up for a couple of questions. We've got some time. So um, for those who've joined us tonight, if you've got any questions uh, for Lee and Simon, just pop them in the chat um, and we will answer probably the first five that we can get Thank to. You um, and then we'll get back into the great big content. If you have a question, just pop them in the, the Q&A section below. First in best dressed. <laughs> Still waiting on a question. Uh, Lee, is there any more of your interview? Oh, we can, we can, it's such a great and beautiful story. We can talk all night. <laughs> Don't have to encourage, encourage Hollywood to, to talk. <laughs> we uh, have had a couple there now, Sam. Yeah, here we go. What's Ion's most important piece of road gear? Road gear. Um, uh, I would have to say a good pair of uh, cycling shorts. Uh, the amount of time you sit on that saddle and uh, slugging away, whether it's uh, doing the big bike ride or doing what I do, you really appreciate having a good pair of quality shorts to ride in. Otherwise, uh, things can get pretty uncomfortable quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, that's a very good call. <laughs> um, I've got one from Ken. Simon, how many KMs per week and how many days per week would you recommend riding as training for the Great Vic? Oh, that's a good question. Um, 
I mean, this it's a hard question to answer because everyone, uh, not everyone can ride their bike seven days a week, uh, as long or as short as they like with work commitments and school commitments. So uh, I'd have to say the most important thing is just uh, fitting in as much time as you can around your school or work uh, and, and trying to just write down a bit of a structure where you can uh, ride every day or you know five days a week uh, obviously some days will be longer than others but if you can just try and get into that rhythm of riding every day and have that feel come naturally uh, that will make uh, the, the ride much more enjoyable Right. We've got a few other questions, which we'll get to later, um, which are more about the event. Um, thanks from Ken. <laughs> Is there any other questions? Oh, here we go. What was your favourite route of the Great Big Bike Ride? Um, good question. Uh, I think I could be wrong here. Someone will correct me. Uh, we started in Dargo, I believe. I think that was the first one I did. In 97? Yes, no, can't remember. I reckon that went through Omeo and Hotham as well. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, hill climbing yeah. in that one. We haven't done that route for a while. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Anyway, we, I remember going through Dargo and that was really nice. So I'd probably have to say that was one of my favourites. And is the Tour de France fun or is it all serious? <laughs> it's very stressful, I have to say. Trying to fit 180 riders down narrow French roads for three and a half thousand kilometres is a very stressful <laughs> undertaking. Um, but yeah, it's, it's great fun. It's really, you know, it's the pinnacle of cycling and just to be able to be a part of it, uh, you have to be in a division one cycling team and then there's in each of those teams there's 30 riders and only eight of them get picked for the tour de france so there's quite a selection process that you have to make to be able to to even get to the tour de france and so uh you always try and pinch yourself a little bit and, and remind yourself to enjoy it because it's a it's a opportunity that doesn't come every day even to current professionals it's it's quite hard to to make that cut in your pro team to get picked. So having ridden seven Tour de France's now, wow. um, uh, I really uh, am honored to have been able to have ridden that many. Uh, we've got a good one from John. Riding is only half of the Great Vic. What's your number one camping tip? <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say number one camping tip is remember where you pitched your tent <laughs> so that if you do happen to be coming home after dark from having a few beverages, you can remember <laughs> where you need to sleep. Another, another good tamp, camping tip from us at Bicycle Network is don't put your tent on a sprinkler. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it's happened. <laughs> Uh, and Simon, will you be going to Wollongong and who are you tipping? Yeah, so I've just arrived uh, back in Australia this morning. Uh, I raced uh, the two World Cups in, in Canada on the weekend in Quebec and Montreal and then uh, flew straight out here and landed in Melbourne this morning. And then tomorrow I'll be travelling to Canberra to the AIS and spending the week there preparing for... Uh, uh, Wollongong and I'll be racing next Sunday the 25th um, in the road race so looking forward to it and uh, yeah that's great uh, and, and your tip himself <laughs> himself, <laughs> himself. <laughs> uh, we've, got, we've got Michael Matthews another Aussie who's in flying form at the moment so um will most likely be supporting him during the race. So obviously uh, we'll be doing everything we can to get him up on the top spot of the podium. He's, po he's podiumed multiple times before. So 
he's probably our best candidate and, and we'll be doing everything to, to get him up there as best as possible. That's great. Uh, and a bit of a technical one. What was your diet? Kilojoules and percentage of protein CHOs during the Tour de France? Um, good question. We eat, uh, we eat a lot of carbohydrate during the Tour de France, <laughs> but we also eat very simple. We, we try not to, we don't eat many veg salad, much salad or vegetables. It's just all pasta, rice, and a little bit of protein from red or white meat and keep it really simple. One important thing that a lot of people don't consider is eating things that are easily digestible and the more complex things you eat, you just make it harder for your body to digest that. So it's actually really important to just put things in your body that are as easily as possible to digest. And so, yeah, eating pasta and rice with pretty much no sauce or anything just so, so that it's easy, it's easy as possible for the body to absorb and, and to process and you're not wasting any excess energy digesting complex foods. So can you have chocolate and cake? We, and have, we have a bit of chocolate. We have a bit of uh, dark chocolate every now and again to sweeten things up. But uh, I mean, yeah try and hold out until the end of the Tour de France to catch up on the on the sweets. We'll, we'll let the chefs know it at Great Vic. <laughs> uh, and one final question before we let you go. Uh, how would you describe the Great Vic in three words? Good question. Um, adventurous, challenging, and a whole lot of fun. Perfect, would definitely agree. <laughs> All right, back to you, Jamie. Great, thank you so much, Simon, for sharing your story with us all and um, yes, yeah, spending time with us. We really appreciate it. No, my pleasure and uh, all the best to everyone who's participating this year, I'm sure it'll It'll be another great ride and another great route and um, make sure you have fun and make the most of it. Great. Thank you so much. All right. I will get back to talking about our great uh, campsites and I can confirm if pasta is served on the event, it will come along with pasta sauce. So we are understanding you are here on holidays and we would like you to enjoy uh, eating your food. So um, now let's talk about the great campsites we have on our event. So the Great Vic is really a town on the move. So each day, the entire campsite rolls from one community into the next. And as you can see from this image here, the campsite has everything you need to enjoy your bike riding holiday. And they're also really placed, we like to place our campsites, as you can see, close to the Great Ocean Road, for example, close to um, the main town or any other beautiful, beautiful sites that we are seeing along the route. The campsites are also zoned. So once you familiarise yourself on the arrival day, uh, you'll feel right at home for the rest of the adventure once you understand where everything is and where you will be sleeping for the night. So what does a typical day on the campsite and event look like? So in the morning, you'll need to fuel up for breakfast. So we offer on the event a continental breakfast, but if you fancy something a little bit more, there's usually a breakfast barbecue being put on by the local communities. And then as you are, once you go through the breakfast line, you can also grab a takeaway snack and that's for you to pocket for later and to enjoy out on the road while you're riding. Lunch is served out at our lunch spots and there you can really take the time to sit down and relax and enjoy a well-deserved break. Then you continue riding and then you roll into the town, which is usually in the afternoon, depending on how far that riding is for that day. So then you'll pass, um, as you enter the campsite, you'll come through what we call our main street, which will have a few uh, food trucks. So if you fancy a second late lunch or a tasty treat, such as an ice cream or something along those lines, we've got that there ready for you. But we also recommend visiting the local cafes and the shops in town as they know, um, yeah, they're there to uh, welcome you all and showcase what they have as well. There will also be lots of local community groups doing uh, barbecues and fundraisers and things, so please make sure you support them as well along the way. 
And then from 5 p.m., dinner is served. So join your fellow riders in the big, big marquee for dinner. And this is usually followed by our rider briefing at seven and plenty of entertainment. And the big one here to remember is you'll see there's a note of it on the slide to please remember to bring your reusable cutlery and crockery. So uh, there's no plates and mugs and cutlery provided on the event that is up to you for you to bring along. It's also a really sustainable way um, for us to run our event and we do have our washing facilities as well to assist with that. Jamie, there was just a question that came through about the nightly entertainment. Um, do you want to cover that one now? Uh, sure. So for the nightly entertainment, uh, we have, so yeah, so it wouldn't be obviously a bike riding holiday without plenty of entertainment and, and that's for the whole family as well. So when you arrive to the next campsite, there will be plenty of activities to choose from um, to suit everyone. And that will either be on our campsite or in the community that we're um, that's hosting us for the night as well. So the options are like, do you prefer to enjoy a refreshing drink in the afternoon seeing an Asperger's bar on the campsite? There'll be an acoustic artist, um, a bit of a cool, uh, more relaxed sort of vibe going on there. Or do you prefer to go for a walk down in the local town and see what they have to offer their local pubs, local restaurants? Um, there may even be um, tours or any of the main attractions for you to go see as well. Later in the evening in our big marquee, we also have live bands and other entertainment. So the other entertainment may be a comedy act or a trivia night, um, for example. And so there is a scheduled on each night and you'll find that in our ride guide when we share that with you all. And that is um, in the big marquee after dinner. Or you might prefer to even catch a movie and that could be in our outdoor cinema that we have on site. So we have two session times, one at 5.30, one at 7.30 and you can um, relax under the stars and, and catch um, a movie uh, that night with your fellow riders. So we'll also share in the lead up um, what the towns have planned for you. As Beck mentioned before, the communities are really um, rally around the event and want to showcase their community as well. So for example, Kuroit is um, preparing a festival welcome for you. So we will make sure we share those details with you so you know what to expect, where to go, the timings it's on, and um, if there's any tours or anything like that, or any markets that you can um, enjoy. And what's really great about all this entertainment is that it just really brings a memorable experience uh, to your bike riding holiday. Uh, now I'll just jump back up to uh, facilities. So to be a town on the move, we do have a number of facilities that travel with us to make sure your experience on the campsite is super comfortable. So before dinner, you might fancy taking a shower um, that, or you might want to go take a grab a cup of tea from our tea and coffee station as well. So um, we always have these facilities open um, post-ride and they shut usually just before dinner. Um, so you can yeah, access these whenever you like um, during those open hours. There's also opportunities to wash your riding gear and other items of clothing. Um, so those will all be shared in our ride guide so you'll know exactly when they are. Or you may wish to visit the mechanics and have your bike looked at um, before the next day of pedaling if there's any tweaks that need um, looking at. You may have some questions for us or want to know more about what Bicycle Network does or have a question about the event and your experience or just interested to know what else is happening in the community. So your best place to go for that is to go visit the information hub that we have in the main street of our campsite and you can speak to the friendly team of volunteers there to point you in the right direction and help you with anything you need a hand with. So they will be your main go-to for any questions you have on event. And then after you enjoy dinner, I touched on it very quickly before, but we do have dishwashing stations available for you to wash your reusable cutlery and um, crockery. So that way it's all clean, ready for breakfast to go and the following dinner. And then other facilities we do have on site include our first aid, and this is open 24 seven for your support. Uh, so that can be easily located with the first aid signage. And um, yes, that's around. and um, yeah, there'll be trained medical professionals in that space there for you. All right, other event info. So to make your stay again more comfortable and carefree with us, there are a range of ride extras that you can add to your ticket to make sure it's a, you, you can be in full holiday mode while on your bike riding holiday. So to start off with, we have our camping upgrades and these include um, tents. So we've got our dome tents, which is that first picture on the left there, followed by our stand up tents, which you can actually stand up in unless you're 
too tall. Um, and then we've also got, um, we've also partnered with All Trails who each and every year come along with us and they offer a offsite accommodation package uh, for a smaller group of riders. So there's a few options there that come at additional costs and all those um, pricings and extra information on those services can be found on our website. But it is a really great opportunity um, to use these camping upgrades if you don't want to bring your own tent, you don't want the fuss of having to um, find a spot to camp or you don't want to have to set it up and fiddle with all the poles um, and anything like that. It just means you can arrive to the campsite, go find your, the already set up tent for you that's allocated to you and then go and um, enjoy all the live entertainment that we've got um, planned on the event for you. Another ride extra is charging. So we all know how important your phones are to you to capture um, not only the memories you have and are creating on this event, but to also stay connected to family and friends. And of course, to keep track of those kilometers on Strava for those that um, don't do a ride without tracking um, the kilometers, because otherwise it doesn't count, right? So you can hire these portable power banks for unlimited charging at the campsite in the main street. So that means, um, yeah, you can, so we've got a contractor that comes along with us there that handle this service. So you can pre-book and add this to your booking. Therefore, you don't have to uh, worry about um, your phone ever dying on a bench as well with unlimited charging. And then secondly, we also have um, secure overnight e-bike um, charging, which is the Bicycle Network is thrilled to be offering this new service um, especially with the growing pop popularity of e-bikes. So this package includes unlimited charging of your e-bike at the campsite post riding, um, a secure place to leave your bike or your battery overnight. And we will also transport um, your charger for you from campsite to campsite. So you can drop that off with us on your arrival day and collect that at the finish line. And then our final ride extra as well is transport. So um, to help you get to and from the event, we offer a coach and um, transport, so for yourself and also your bike. So the main hubs we do offer transport from is Melbourne, Geelong, Ballarat, Bendigo, Traugan, Albury and Wangaratta. So we have tried to capture there all the major hubs around Victoria. Uh, there are, there's a lot of advice on our website as well um, on how to protect your bike. So it does go on a truck. So what we do recommend is um, wrapping your bike in um, the important, the delicate areas with some bubble wrap or um, reusable um, packaging that you would like to keep, or you can put it also in a bike box if you wish. Um, and it's, and this um, transport is also ideal for riders located. Um, yeah, this option is really good for the riders located in this area. Um, then we've also got the long-term car park. So that is located in Bunningyong where our finish site is for the event. So what happens there is that you drive there on day one on your arrival day, park your car, uh, and then you'll jump on our coach and truck transport with you and your bike um, to, and we'll take you to the um, start line. So this is definitely, so this is more ideal for riders that aren't close to locations listed above. So that way you can drive from wherever you live um, to get most of the way and then you'll finish the event in Bunningyong and be able to um, access your car and uh, go home from there. If neither of these options are the right one for you, an alternative is to um, have family and friends pick you up and drop you off as well. So we just got a few frequently asked questions that we'd like to cover. So firstly, a common one we get here is, uh, what type of bike can I ride? So our answer here is um, any bike that you feel most comfortable on riding, the daily distance is on. So all the riding is on bitumen and with you might only experience tiny amounts of grass and gravel as you come in and out of our rest areas, but all the riding is on the road. And all types of bikes are welcome on this event. So road bikes, hybrid bikes, e-bikes, even we've seen the most unconventional bikes like tandems and everything like that as well. So any bike, um, as long as you're comfortable riding it and more than welcome on our event. How fit do I need to be? So. We do have, every, again, every type of rider and riding ability on our bench. As a bit of a baseline, the average rider times that we base our operations on is 12 to 25 kilometres per hour. So ideally, um, it would be best as long as you can keep maintain that 12 um, kilometres per hour speed, then you'll definitely stay within our um, on-road operations times and um, make it um, from campsite to campsite with ease. There are also rest stops every 25 kilometres. So these are really good opportunities to take the time to refuel, rest and get ready for the next se section that you're ready to tackle um, on that right day. 
The next question is, how do I move my luggage from site to site? So we have trucks that travel with us that transport all your luggage. And all you have to do in the morning is um, give us your luggage, um, go to the trucks and load your, I'm um, sorry, let me start again. You gotta go to the truck, give us your luggage and that will go on the truck before you ride for that morning. And then all you gotta do is take note of what number truck you have given your luggage to because when you arrive at the next campsite, you'll find that same number truck and that is where your luggage will be. Being an outdoor event, we highly recommend having a waterproof bag. But again, this isn't essential. Um, and each rider can bring one bag up to 20 kilometres or two bags at 10 kilometres each. So whichever you prefer. Kilos, Jamie. What did I say? Kilometres. Sorry, um, I'm on the bike riding distances. <laughs> Kilos would make more sense. So it's like a lot of um, <laughs> luggage. Thanks, Beck. And can I hire a bike? Uh, yes, you can. So we have hired with Rent My Bike and they are a fleet. Um, they have a fleet of road, hybrid and e-bikes available for you to hire. Uh, so they you can find their details on our website and they can also arrange transport of that bike to and from the event for you, which is a real bonus um, if you're coming from interstate or just yet yeah, prefer to use um, a bike that you don't own. So that, that's the options there. So what we might do is um, go over to questions, Sam and Beck. Yep, we've got a few here in the chat. Um, does the stand-up tent include a mattress? Yes. So, uh, Susie, yes, the stand-up um, sleep easy tents do include foam roll mats. Um, but if you're if you're um, securing the dome sleep easy tents, they don't. So you need to bring a mat. But the stand-up do. So um, that's a slight difference there as well. Um, another question that has come through from Maria and Alan is, will the showers be open on the first day at Croyt? Yes, they will. Um, so Croyt is a fully um, equipped live campsite, the same experience that you would have um, across all the other sites on the event. So uh, when you get there, if you're getting there a few days early and you're going for a pedal in the morning, you want to have a shower in the afternoon, they'll be available. Or if you're coming off the coaches or a long drive, um, you, they'll be there to freshen up too. Um, Tom would like to know, will there be any road groups that crack along for a solo rider to join? Great question, Tom. Uh, yes, so as Jamie mentioned, we cater for, um, our operations cater for riders traveling at different speeds, so between 12 and 25 k's an hour. Um, in terms of hooking up with other riders on the event that are around um, your speed, um, there's a couple of options. So pre-event, you can join the Great Vic Bike Ride Facebook group, share a little bit about yourself, um, and you'll find some like-minded riders uh, or like-paced riders in there, um, and then have a friendly face to meet once you get to the event. Um, but often we find those riders that are traveling um, at those faster speeds, uh, they often leave earlier in the morning. So if you're um, getting on the road nice and early, you'll probably find that you're amongst um, those at a similar pace. Um, another idea is uh, there's going to be some Warby rides coming up soon. Um, check out the training rides on the Great Big website. Might be a good chance to meet people there. Um, what info is included in the daily newsletter? Excellent question. So the daily newsletter um, will have some general kind of news articles about the event so we do some profiles and some volunteers long-term writers any special interest stories um, but also on a day-to-day -day basis it will have information about the following day's route so some more specific information it will have the weather that you can expect um, and also things like what's going to be in the community that you're heading towards so if you're joining us at Kuroit on that Saturday night, that first newspaper will have all the information about Sunday's riding and Sunday's community um, as well. And then it kind of continues forward like that each day. Did I miss anything on that one, Jamie? No, nailed it. Uh, Alison has asked, what time on day one do you accept bikes and what time can we access stand-up tents? Campsites open at 9 a.m. on day one. So fully live from 9 a.m., a lot earlier than normal. Um, on the other ride days, campsite opens at midday. 
um, because we understand everyone's coming from different areas. Some people are staying locally the night before. Campsite will be open from 9 a.m. and that will include um, stand up as well, Alison. Uh, Davin has asked, do I have to bring cash or can you use card at campsite each day? This is a good one. Um, it was asked at the community meetings actually last week as well. So um, on with the facilities that we, Bicycle Network runs on site. So the bar, um, the info, merch and things like that. We'll accept cash, um, but we do obviously have FPOS facilities because we know most people use that these days. Um, some of the vendors would prefer that you're paying uh, by FPOS only, um, but then the community groups, often they don't have those facilities for their fundraising activities, barbecues, things like that. So I would encourage you to bring some cash, um, also knowing that some of the towns don't have any or have limited ATM facilities. So definitely pack some cash, um, but also know that at times you will be able to use uh, FPOS. Um, Ricky would, is just following up on uh, transporting a, transporting bikes. Um, the website says that a bike box is required um, or is bubble wrap or similar okay? Do you wanna go for that one, Jamie? Yeah, of course. Either option is totally fine. So as long as your bike is well protected as it is going on a truck with um, other bikes as well. And the team do take all care and all um, yeah, duty to make sure that bikes are being loaded with great care and um, yeah, appropriately as well. So the two ways we do see bikes um, given to us on the event is either in a bike box and what um, we do have as well is we work with a local uh, rotary club that will be there on the arrival days that can accept your bike box. And for a small fee, um, I think it's around $25 to $50, depending on the duration of the time you're staying on the event. And then they will transport that bike box um, for you to the end of the event. So you can um, yeah take it home or reuse. Alternatively, you can um, bubble wrap or wrap up your um, bike and, and protect those um, valuable areas such as the derailleur and the gears and um, yeah, and then keep that for the return trip home as well. Um, we've got a couple of questions about um, the long-term car park and what time the buses leave going to the event and leaving the event at the end. Yeah, of course. Uh, off the top of my head, all the times are listed um, on our website and there are a lot of variable times. Um, they do, though, a, I think the Melbourne one's about at 8.30 to 9 o'clock, but please don't quote me on that. We'll have a look at the website. Um, <laughs> uh, Jay, I've just pulled it up while you were Perfect. chatting away. So um, the question around the long-term car park, the bus from Bunningyong to Croyt, that bus will leave at 9.30 a.m. from Bunningyong. Um, and the Melbourne coaches uh, are leaving at 9.15 a.m. That location at the moment is just TBC. We should have the answer for that um, in the next week. We're just finalising the details on that. Um, and it is in uh, central Melbourne though as well. And those uh, bus times are also uh, designed so you arrive at the campsite just after lunch. Um, usually about that 12, 1 o'clock um, time. So you've still got plenty of time to get yourself sorted and enjoy Karoi. Uh, and I think there was a question about what time does the bus leave from Buddingyong at the end? Is that right, Sam? Yes. So uh, the buses uh, to Melbourne will start departing from 12 and they will leave um, as they get full and with the last bus um, departing by 2 p.m. And then the uh, the other regional coaches is usually only a handful of people on those ones. So they will be marking off the list of who um, and make sure they've captured everyone um, with the aim to leave at 12, but they'll, they will make sure they've got everyone on board before they depart for that one. Um, we've also had a question, um, of course, in this day and age around our COVID safety rules. Um, we do have our full COVID uh, safe policy on the website, so it is definitely worth having a look through. Um, but to keep it nice and simple, it's basically consistent with all the standard things that you see um, these days uh, in kind of the current environment that we're in. So obviously encouraging social distancing, and we help with that by making sure there's lots of space for our communal areas. Um, we have an increased cleaning schedule, uh, and we have, have a um, COVID safe plan uh, in the event that someone tests positive on the event and how we 
um, support them, but also isolate them and then any follow up actions as well. But um, the full plan is available on our website and hopefully as we continue on um, through this pandemic, um, it seems to be getting a little bit easier and easier each week, um, but we're very excited that we're able to support and run this event in the current times. Um, and we've got one more question in here, unless there's any others that want to come through. Um, is lunch provided on day one at Croyt? No, so lunch on day one is not provided. So we do encourage you to um, go and enjoy Croyt and their local community and all the uh, wonderful cafes and food they have there. Um, so lunch is um, provided from day two onwards. Um, and then on day nine, when we finish in Bunning Yong, breakfast is the only um, meal catered for that morning. Um, we've had another one come through from Sandy. If we box our bike to get it from the long-term car park, uh, to the start, is there a place to dispose of the box? Yes, uh, great question. So we do partner with a local Rotary Club um, that offer the service. I'll be there at Caroit and at Apollo Bay to collect your uh, bike box for a small fee and they will transport it to um, your end site for you to collect. I think, Anna, here's another one. Can you provide the food menu before the ride starts? I would love that as well, Carolyn. <laughs> we do. Sam, <laughs> uh, it is just being finalised at the moment because we also include all the nutritional information um, for those that might have allergies and things they need to keep an eye out or look at the menu. Um, so that full menu, Jamie, will be available in the next couple of weeks, I imagine. Yep, totally. Um, and that will include what options there are for um, all the uh, vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free diets as well. And we'll have a breakdown of what each meal is. Um, can you please describe the trucks that carry the bikes? Do the trucks have some type of bike racks? How are they stacked in? Oh, I can yep. take oh, oh, yeah. Jamie. No. Oh. So the um, trucks used are um, large cattle trucks, which I know can sound a bit odd, but they are the perfect truck for the job. And we use um, a team of, yeah, we've been working with this supplier for many, many years on the Great Vic and have done it many times before and are um, yeah, experts at stacking the bikes. Uh, so when you arrive, there'll be a team that can help of our warbies that can help assist. Um, we turn handlebars and we um, may have to remove um, your pedals, but they are there with the tools to help assist with that one. That's all the questions we've got so far. Unless there's any last minute ones coming through. While we're waiting for that, I'm going to put Jamie and uh, Sam on the spot. Jamie, what are you most looking forward to at Great Vic this year? Oh, I am most forward looking. Uh, I am looking forward to the most. Um, just honestly being back on event. It's been a long two years without the Great Vic bike ride and just seeing um, all the bike rides out on the road, just enjoying the scenery. Um, it's a really stunning route this year and um, especially the Great Ocean Road, it's going to be closed and it's just um, a bit of a bucket list item to kind of ride that and really take it all in um, with no worries. Sam? Um, I am definitely looking forward to sneaking off and getting a snack or two. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of uh, amazing bakeries and fish and chips shops and yeah, if you haven't checked out the uh, tasting trail, um, give it a look because there's plenty of good foodie places along the route this year. Yeah, we've been told there's the best uh, fish and chips in Anglesey and that was confirmed yeah. as well by one of our volunteers that was doing a uh, route trip for us. Uh, yesterday he called me to rave about the, um, Keith, he raved about the fish and chips in Anglesey and said we have to go and have that for dinner one night. So I can't wait. Excellent. Uh, and I think I'm most looking forward to the small communities. Um, this year we've sort of packed the route with a lot of smaller communities, um, but we tend to see them get involved the most when the Great Vic comes to town and, and a town like Nurat, which is 200 people, um, what they can pull together really celebrates kind of those small communities, which is one of the best things. So I can't wait to be back out amongst it. Jamie, I think that's it. Perfect. Well, thank you everyone for attending. We hope you got um, a lot of information and value out of this and also enjoyed the interview with Simon Clark. If you do have any further questions, um, 
that pop into your mind at a later date, please feel free to give the, our team a call or send through an email and we will get back to you as soon as we can. But thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your, rest of your night.